some old school engineering. You'd be looking at, that's crazy. If I was spending that kind of money on a unit. Hey, it's Keith with Yarbrough and Sons. Today we took apart an old electric furnace. We just got done taking it all apart. I don't really know what age of the unit it is. It doesn't have any kind of data plate to indicate the age, but I almost guarantee it's as old as me. And one thing about these is we don't see these as much anymore, but we wanted to take these components and show you pretty much the basic components that are still found in most HVAC systems to this day. So today we really wanna go over common issues you'll see with these parts, and then how often you might need to replace these, kind of what you're looking at time-wise, and about how much they cost. So let's get started. First part we're gonna be looking at is a transformer. Now, transformers are found in almost every single HVAC system out there. They're a very common way for us to control the system. We want to use that low voltage as a way to control it. Makes it a lot safer than using high voltage. This one is actually a 240 to 24 volt transformer. They come in different sizes. For this one, we're using 240 volt. All that means is we're stepping down the voltage from 240 and we're just making a safer 24 volts so we can control things like your fan, contactors for your elements and stuff like that. Most common issues you usually see with these is they're very common to have a short actually damage these. That's why most new units will have a fuse in line to try to protect this. They can go out over age, but most of the time, if a transformer goes out, it's because of another reason. Age for these, like I said, they don't typically go out. They can last the life of the unit. This one here, right here is the original one to the unit. It's usually not this transformer that's going out. It's something else that's causing it. Typical price on these is about $275. So let's go ahead and look at another component. This right here is actual fuse block holding fuses in it. Now, typically you won't see a fuse block go out and this is not common to have on most air handlers nowadays. Usually we're using breakers. Any kind of trouble we have with it will trip that breaker. Now, fuses can be found all over the system. We usually find them in disconnects and different things like that. So they are common to most HVAC systems nowadays. Fuses like these can uh, go out just because of any kind of short. They really don't usually go out just because of age. They're a pretty good component as long as you don't have any kind of problems. It's possible to go out just because of how old they are, but most of the time we wanna make sure we're checking all other kind of components to see why that fuse went out. They usually cost about $95 to replace. That can vary based on what sizes they are and, and different factors like that. This right here is a relay. We find these in many units. Now it's getting uncommon to find as many relays as we used to. One reason is we use control boards, which usually have built-in relays in them. Great components can last a long time, they cannot. This is a really old relay, if you can actually tell. They're really just taking 24 volts on this one and that powers a coil and it just pulls in these contacts. And that's all you're doing is pulling in contacts so you can send out power to like your fan. This one's to actually control the fan. So you get to 24 volts, pulls in those contacts, sends it out. Typical issues we see with these, coils can actually go bad. They can short out, that's pretty common. Also points can go out. One reason you don't see relays like this anymore is they usually enclose them. And enclosing them helps a little bit with not having those points go out as fast. You can get relays to go out, you know, after two or three years, or you can have them last a long time. So life expectancy on them can vary between two to 20 years. Price on replacing normal relays is usually anywhere from $260 and up. I build a lot of things that we have to do special projects. Uh, with relays and that's one thing that's good with relays is I can put a whole bunch of relays together make that system do what I want and the problem with them is is you put let's say five of these relays together you're always going to be replacing a relay and that's one of the reasons why they kind of went to a control boards is they can have one component that yes it costs more in the long run but control boards usually last longer lots of times you'll get little bugs that get in these relays that's one reason you want them closed up. And that's where you see a lot of the problems is just little things that could be prevented. And that's one reason the industry has moved away from using just a relay. Let's look at the next part. Just like a relay, this is a contactor. Now, we usually see contactors uh, in situations where we wanna use a higher amp draw on something. So this is actually used for the 
heat strips because they have a high amp draw. And just like a relay, we're gonna have a coil that's 24 volts on this one that's gonna power this and suck in those contactors. Just like a relay, you can actually have these points get pitted and that's usually what the common problem is with them. Anytime you're bringing in high voltage and you're slapping across there, it's gonna cause distortion on that surface of that point and that's gonna cause it to break down. Typical life expectancies of these is usually about five years. They'll start getting pitted up and really need to make sure that you're checking them. One thing we run into a problem with a lot on these is you'll get those points pitted up and so it's not making a good contact and you're actually causing these wires to get hotter than what they need. So one thing you'll usually see is a wire that'll be burnt off and that's never fun to, to deal with and causes other problems, you know. You definitely wanna have them checked out regularly to make sure that there's no issues with them. Regular maintenance is not gonna save the contactor, but it's gonna save you a lot of headaches of damaging other controls in your system by not having enough power go where it needs. So we wanna make sure anytime that this is damaged that we get it replaced. That's one reason you wanna have regular maintenance done on your unit yearly. Price on this is gonna be somewhere around $275. Let's check out another component. Here we have an interesting one. This is actually a sequencer. Now, if you know a lot of people um, that do this, and or if you're one of those guys that does this a lot, you might go, that's not a sequencer. This is, this is an old school sequencer. You don't see them like this anymore. Usually they're, they're stacked up, little kind of disc, same principle as they've always been. All they are, is a component where we can actually kind of do a time delay for your heat strips. And that's what it's for, is we don't want to bring on all heat strips all at once. What happens is, is your heat strips are going to be the highest amp draw that you have on your unit. And so when those heat strips call, you don't want to bring all heat strips on at once. You want to stage it out. And that's where these heat sequencers come in handy. Kind of problems we usually find on these is they have points inside of them. They get really hot. They usually break down. You'll start messing with them. You'll start seeing the plastic break because it, it'll get so hot. So that's one reason you always want to make sure that you are having it maintained, checked, because these do go out and it's better to catch them before than after they've caused a problem. And definitely don't want to go without heat for a while. You want to make sure you got it in there. But this is not what they typically look like nowadays. This is a very interesting one. On a price for a sequencer is going to vary because we have many different types of sequencers and different functions for them, but you're going to look at anywhere from $280 and up for the replacing this sequencer. Onward to the next. This is a run capacitor. We're starting to see less and less of these. These this is what we consider a single run capacitor. This will be for your blower motor. It's a very crucial part for those blower motors. Nowadays, blower motors are starting to go for, from a PSC motor to a ECM motor is the new standard. So you don't see as many of these, but there are plenty of furnaces out there where you're gonna find a run cap. Run caps can last usually from about five years. You could get them down to two years if you really wanted to, depending on what kind of run cap you, you use. Most run caps are made in China and that's a problem. <laughs> but usually when we put in a run cap, we put in an American made one. And a lot of the reasons the American made ones last longer is the oil that they use in them. American run caps are typically use a synthetic oil to whereas China or overseas caps use a bean oil or a vegetable oil that's gonna heat up more. Most of the time when you find a problem with these, it's because it got too hot and you'll notice it because it'll start bubbling up at the top. Age on them is gonna vary. Why this, you know, you can find them where it's about a, a year that they've lasted, which is always a bummer, but it does happen. Usually if you're looking at something like that, you probably have a different problem than just the run cap. Price for this run cap is gonna be $185. So let's move on to the next one. This is a very common part that you're gonna find almost every electric furnace You'll find them, you'll find different styles of these on gas furnaces too. This is a high limit switch. It is a very important safety switch. We wanna make sure that when you're running that unit, you're not getting anything too hot. 
you want to keep it cool because the hotter we get it, it can cause all kinds of problems. Damage to electrical wires, damages to other things. This safety is going to be very important. Simple device, little disc here. Just whenever it gets hot enough, it pushes in on that disc and, and opens the limit so that we can't have power go through anymore. And then once it gets cooled off enough, it'll pop back out and go back to working. Anytime you have one of these go out, it's typically due to just that constant going off, going on, going off, going on. That does happen a lot and most people don't notice it, but that's probably what it is. So anytime you have one of these go out, you wanna definitely look at other symptoms. Is my fan not blowing hard enough? You know, other things like that. So a professional really needs to diagnose any other kind of issues that you might have with this and take care to get it right because we don't want to have anything that's going to cause any safety issues. They can last a long time, 10 to 15 years, shouldn't have a problem. Obviously, if you're having it go out before then, definitely would want to check other components to make sure your fan's blowing enough air across there. Price for replacing that limit is going to vary, obviously, because we have to know what kind it is, but you could look around $280 to replace this limit. Let's see what else we got. Oh, we're going to do this all in one. Wow. This is a blower assembly. Obviously, we got the blower motor in here. Going to be in every kind of unit. Obviously, this is a PSC motor. Like I said, all modern units are going to start having ECM motors. One thing we always want to make sure is we're checking motors out. You'll have over amping, other little things that are gonna go wrong with it. If you told me that this blower motor was out, I would probably say it was just worked to death because if you can actually see this blower wheel, it is not clean. And that's a common problem we see when these go out. Wheel will not be clean. That's gonna cause more stress on your actual blower motor. Very common problem. So. Definitely wanna make sure we're getting that wheel cleaned. Any kind of dust built up on that, if you get about an eighth of an inch of dust, you're gonna cut your airflow down by about 20%. So you can see on things like your limit could be going out because you're not pushing enough air th flow through there. That's why you wanna have things checked out. You wanna make sure you clean them. Definitely wanna make sure, just like this, you probably change your filter more often. This thing probably was not running very efficient the way it was. Just I, I wish you could see the blower motor even better. I don't know. Does it show it in there? It's pretty bad. So on cleaning that blower wheel, it's going to cost you around $230 roughly. Definitely would suggest it on this one. We're not getting the airflow we need out of it. On that blower motor, it's going to be a little bit different. You can have them last for a while, but usually we look at around 10 to 15 years on the life expectancy of it. Cost for replacing that blower motor is going to be about $650 and up. Kind of depends on what size the blower motor is on what that pricing is going to be. Also the different types, because if it's an ECM motor, you're going to look at possibly being over a thousand dollars just to replace that blower motor. That's kind of a big ticket item. Anytime we're replacing a, a blower motor, we're looking at different factors. Is it under warranty? Typical systems nowadays have 10 year on parts. If it was going to be under warranty, I'm not gonna suggest anything besides replacing the motor. That's gonna be your best bet. You might have to pay for the labor of changing the motor, but you're not gonna actually have to pay for the part. So that cuts down the price quite a bit. But if you're looking at something like $650 to replace a blower motor and your unit's 20 years old, I don't really suggest putting that kind of money into that blower motor when we could have a bunch of other parts that are gonna be going out in the next few years too and have problems. And especially nowadays with going with the uh, ECM motors, you know, if you're spending a thousand dollars towards the unit, I've always been one that says, if you're putting 10% of the cost of a new unit into that old unit, it's almost better to take that 10% and put it towards that new unit, something that's more efficient and get you a warranty to where you're not having to worry about different things like is other components gonna go out on it. So. Let's get this nasty thing out of here. Oh, don't breathe. Here we go with some electric heat strips. I know somebody's out there going, that's not electric heat strips. I've seen electric heat strips. These are some electric heat strips. They are not what you usually see. 
Uh, nowadays we have what electric heat strips or just coils that run around here. This is kind of an old school way of doing things. This will be your heat strips. All your heat would be coming from here. This one is actually 15 kW. It's old, but it looks like it's all intact. Typically don't see too many problems with them. Other ones, you'll have shorts that can happen on them and stuff like that. Uh, there's that high limit. There's the one high limit and there is the other one. So those are the two safeties. When we have a problem with these nowadays, you can restring these. Obviously this one can't, but typical ones, you can restring these heat, heat kits. I don't suggest it on the price that it costs to change or to restring them. Typically we can get another heat kit for cheaper and have it put in. And then that heat kit will actually have a warranty. Most of the, you know, most of the heat kits that we, we put in, if we had to go back with another heat kit, you would get a five year warranty. So restringing them is not something we do a lot of. I am not a big fan of restringing. I would much rather see something new put in. So whenever I'm gonna be replacing this, whether it be restringing it or actual replacing the whole heat kit, we need to quote it out. You're looking at probably around $1,000 to replace it. And that's just an estimate that's gonna vary based on what brand it is, how much we can get the heat kit for. But a lot of good things about replacing the whole heat kit is a lot of these components will come with it. So typically it will come with sequencers and relays and stuff like that and your limits. It will replace all those parts. So it's almost, if I had to restring one, I feel bad. This is not one you'd restring. Obviously you could replace these pretty easily. You just buy, but we couldn't get a new element for this. I don't know where I would find one. Sadly, these probably still work and they probably work good. <laughs> That's some old school engineering. Pricing on that's gonna vary. Definitely if you have anything to do with a heat kit, we need to, uh, to price that out to you and get you a quote. So that was 10 components that are common on most air handlers uh, that you'll see. If I was to add up all these parts, you're just, in my opinion, you're just gonna spend way too much money. I wouldn't want to pay that kind of a bill on something and put that kind of money towards an old system like this one is. If we were to look at replacing all these parts, excluding the heating elements, you'd be looking at $2,637. That's crazy. If I was spending that kind of money on a unit, I would want to get a quote on a new unit. So if you feel like your unit is older than me, definitely want to go ahead and get a quote and not looking at repairing. If you're looking at any major repairs or let's say a blower wheel with a cleaning, there's more than one sequencer in that unit. So there's two sequencers, two uh, contactors, three fuses. You're looking at adding up a lot of money to be spent on that unit. We definitely won't, don't want to put all that money into a less efficient unit, something that we could get rid of and move on to something that is going to get you a higher efficiency. Drop your electrical bill down to where each month you're actually saving money to put back towards replacing that new unit. This has been a pretty fun project. It uh, allows me to go through an older system and kind of see what parts would be common back then and today and see that not much has changed, but the efficiency is where it has changed a whole bunch on those systems. Again, I'm Keith with Yarbrough and Sons. If you have any questions about your furnace, air conditioning, air handler, definitely give us a call at 405-309-3470. Thanks guys.